Oh, there we are. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about communication. <clears throat> and we're all involved, as we think about the IIS and the FTC, we're thinking about how do we share our ideas in ways that actually grab people's attention? And this actually started off all oh, about six, seven years ago uh, at a multidisciplinary conference in uh, Montreal. <clears throat> and there was a lass who was giving her PhD sort of poster presentation. She got out 10 minutes to do this and she spent five or six minutes just argue, explaining why she had chosen a particular statistic. And I talked to the conference organizer and look, we need to do better than that. And so I actually ran at that annual conference um, for about six, five or six years, a workshop, an hour long workshop on sharing your ideas how we should actually be communicating and mainly around presentations but as you'll see as i go through this we actually move into documentary text-based communication as well as presentations like i'm doing now so a quick reminder why are we here however many of us there are currently online together and hopefully many more will see this um, over the next few days online through YouTube, where I'll post it. Now, we've got the IIAS, and we re remember that this is always multidisciplinary. So we're talking about different domains to people from other domains, transdisciplinary. Uh, it's the Systemic Cybernetics and Informatics uh, Conference for the, uh, 2023. The International Association for Transdisciplinary Communication, which we're trying to get started and uh, publicized, and because it's got a really important topic, really important function. And all of it is about communication across domain boundaries and obviously within domains as well. When we get into transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary and intradisciplinary communications, we have a problem. I remember another keynote lecture given at one of those Toronto uh, conferences by one of the local professors giving the keynote. And it could have been a really fantastic uh, short presentation about the wonders around the uh, sort of Lake Ontario. But she sat there, or she stood there, and she had her papers in her hand like this, and she was talking in a very, very boring monotone and killed us all off. We know we just weren't remotely gathered into her thinking. Many of us are academics, and we hopefully actually do better than that in a way that we teach, mentor, guide, enthuse our students. We're wanting to you know, get our audience engaged in what we're talking about. And when we are in a, an environment like that, in fact, almost every time you give a presentation, almost every time you write an academic paper, every time you write a blog or what, give a blog, you need to think about who are we? Yeah, are we the professor there in the middle or are we a range of different backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities? All of those things that are so important when we think about communication. Who are we in the audience? Who are you in the audience that I'm trying to connect with? These are really, really important points. But remember, the thing that is really important, the audience, that's you, want to be captured and drawn into what I'm talking about. You want me to enthuse you. You want me to essentially, ultimately, perhaps convince you that I've done a good piece of work 
in the terms of background I'm bringing to you. And that depending on the context, I'm convincing, I'm persuasive. But you want to be captured. You know, we want a story because we don't just want the pure logic, the numbers. We are humans, we are people. We have emotions as well. And stories are the way that we capture both the, the logic and the emotion, the meaning and the emotion. How many times we listen to, uh, say, a politician who's very, very good um, at the logic of his case or her case? And you go away at the end thinking, mm -hmm. I, can, I can see the logic, but it doesn't connect with my emotions, doesn't connect with being human. You need both. Oops, sorry. And remember, particularly this audience through the IIS and the FTC, we are all intensely and incredibly inquisitive about everything. Now we can have a discussion when we were last in Orlando, you, know, you but we talk to each other and we're always interested in each other's perspectives. We are inquisitive, like this little child, you know, why, 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 what, what, what? It doesn't matter how many answers you give, there's always another why. We need to remember that that's what we should be doing. And those of us who are academics, we need to be instilling that inquisitiveness back into our students. You know, our education systems almost across the world are incredibly good at get rid of, getting rid of that inquisitiveness by the time our children are around about 10 or 11. By the time they come to university, they've forgotten almost how to ask questions. So we thought, we take Einstein as a great, great, great intellect, but he felt that he didn't have a special talent, but he was intensely and passionately curious about the way the world worked. We're here because we want to make connections. Yeah, connections to people. That's what we do when we get face to face, hopefully next year in Orlando. That'd be so great if we could do. But also, we're trying to connect ideas. Those of us who are academics and researchers, much of what we do is basically around making connections between ideas. And ideally, we're trying to get our students and our research to connect ideas which have never been connected together before. As a side comment, that's one of the reasons why I don't think AI will ever be able to mark our assignments from our students, because they will learn to mark the average. They will never be able to connect, mark those brilliant ones which connect different ideas together, because it's not in the textbook. You can't connect that with that, just not there. But that's what we're doing. That's what we're pushing our students to do. That's what we're pushing our research to do. This is what we then want to be able to communicate. And we have to think about all of the questions around communication to be able to persuade our audiences, our readers, that we have connected these really interesting ideas from left field and right field together in ways which no one has done because that moves human knowledge forward. You see, you need to be thinking in terms of storytelling. You need to be thinking about, in terms of your communication in your presentation, your maybe it's your five minute um, poster presentation, or it may be your 20 minute presentation here for your own paper. S strip out all the extraneous stuff that doesn't make it interesting. What's the big problem? You know, if you're going to capture my attention, you need to know, tell me why your piece of research is interesting and important. Otherwise, I go to sleep. What are the things you've done about approaching a problem that's different? What have you discovered? And what's 
your contribution to knowledge. These are all the things that are so important. If you're going to capture me, and that's what you really need to do. You are capturing me so that I go away from that conference, from your presentation, from reading your uh, publication, your article. Wow. I understand it. It's important. I need to do something about it. Now, when you're giving a presentation in a, conf a multidisciplinary conference, one of the things that you really, 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 really don't want to do is do that. Lots and lots of statistics. It takes a long time to read them. Most of us really don't understand all of those things very well. You know, statistics is a sort of, you know, we have this feel that statistics is all very complicated. And we know from experience that a lot of people hide their research behind statistics because hopefully no one will really notice where the mistakes. But when we do something like this, this was a presentation I was giving about the accuracy of G GPS systems. This captured the whole of my little experiment. I took 52 photos at 30 second intervals at the top of Montreal in Montreal. And then I decoded the uh, GPS tags and discovered some interesting things. It started off in altitude terms, oh, a good to uh, 50 meters below where the top of the summit was. And this one shows how it wanders over that 30, nearly 30 minutes, 26 minutes. It took me for a walk <clears throat> around the summit quite unreasonably. That wasn't what happened. I sat, was standing or sitting at this point about here. So I can show in that sort of summary, the whole of a research project. Now that's captured your attention probably that GPS isn't very accurate. So what is it we need to do to improve our communications? And as we think about presentations, particularly given that, that um, the actual wording here, but it's also about as we write our articles, um, our, our articles for conference papers, presentations, and so on. We get various limitations, but the thing we need to start off with is what do I want to say? And of course, what I want to say is everything. I've got so much that I could go on for hour upon hour upon hour. But you've got a 10 minute slot or 20 minute slot or 30 minute slot, whatever. Or you've got a few thousand words or a few pages. You need to filter down everything to what do I actually need to say to capture my audience? You need to think about your motivation. Why? And there's both this want and the need. <clears throat> the want is, you know, internal. I've got so much. But question about persuasion and connection is about the needs what do I, what does my audience need my readership need what do my research partners need because we haven't all got got all the time in the world we need to pair back what we're saying and we need to think about the who um again this, the, who do I want? Who do I need? Again, it comes down to efficiency of communication, the transfer of knowledge in a particular situation. Do I need three meetings or one meeting? Do I need three papers or one paper? And so on. And we'll come back to some of the consequences of all of this in a minute. presentations you know how often do we go to a presentation particularly academic ones where the presenter has got 50 slides everyone is dense with text and they've got 15 minutes to present it and at the end of the 15 minute slot the um a timekeeper is busy saying right five minutes two minutes one minute stop and 
the guy carries on or the, 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 the woman carries on. <laughs> and I noticed that something that's very, very interesting, that academics are much, much more likely to go on and on compared with the business conferences I mostly go to. Business conference goers are very, very disciplined at keeping to their time slot. They're very good at crafting their slides and running through them to that 10 minute, 15 minute slot. So let's go very quickly through some of the critical things. Are you, and again, in terms of the content, sometimes we communicate to inform, this is what's happening, or mostly, hopefully, we're looking at persuasion. But I want to persuade you here to actually understand that how critical input, uh, communication is and some of the really important things that are necessary, like cutting, sorry, cutting it down. I don't need to say everything. How do I give it that focus? It hits the time scale and also gets you captured. We need to have just one aim. Far too often people have many aims. There should be just a single aim that captures, which is ultimately to capture the audience's attention and persuade them of something. And then maybe you have one or two objectives. But as you prepare about you know, the content, challenge yourself the why do I want to say it? Why do I need to say it? It's really, really important to keep challenging yourself and honing and refining what you're writing. I tell my students, you know, particularly when they're writing something significant, the first, set yourself, whenever you're starting to do some writing, set yourself an hour, two hour slot and spend the first 15 minutes reading over what you've already written and refining it, editing it, again and again and again move stuff around provide structure first don't worry about the words just the structure and then you can put the words in a bit later on but keep refining it editing it refine it focus and focus is so important now the point about the audience is not just what do they already know and in our context here IIS or the FTC. Yeah, you know, most of our audiences, most of you guys, are going to know a lot about various areas. But you may not know about my technical area or Vinod's and so on. And what we need to be thinking about in inter and transdisciplinary communication is what is it? that we need to be thinking about as a consequence of who our audience is. Each of our domains, we have a jargon, those shortcut terms, which are words from the, uh, the standard language, in our terms, English at the moment, but many of you from other uh, language backgrounds will again have the same sort of problem that there are in each domain area of knowledge, shortcut terms which are used with very very specific and very different meanings perhaps from standard natural language and that can cause a problem so we need to be thinking about the type of jargons that are being used by our various people research partners and so on Do we need to think a bit about the key terms which may need to be defined just so that we actually are using a word with the same meaning. I mean, as we were starting, um, Najib and I were talking about um, AI. What does the word AI mean, artificial intelligence? I don't know. It means all things to all people. Technologies from the 1960s, and 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and then pattern finding type technologies that have led to large language models like ChatGPT and so, but they're all lumped together with this term AI. 
is meaningless. And we need to define those terms. Now, in terms of timing, simple thing, just remember that what you're actually trying to do is meet a time target or a word or a page count. You've got to do that. You just don't have um, discretion. You will be chopped off at the time. And if you're asking uh, for, you've been told six pages for your conference presentation and you give them seven or eight pages, almost certainly you can guarantee to get a little note coming back saying, oh, okay, two pages over, that's $200 extra. So we have to think about that sort of thing. And if you are giving presentations, remember, don't fill the page with 10 point or 12 point text. Yeah, you want your audience to be captured by looking at you, listening to you, not spending their time reading all the slides. And it also means as well, if you think about this across the, uh, media and think about writing your paper, one of the things you need to be thinking about in terms of this language idea and relates to this whole sort of keeping things simple, we really don't need to use very long words. I remember one occasion listening to an um, professorial um, inauguration, inaugural lecture. And this particular professor was very keen on using six or eight syllable words, if he possibly could. His ordinary English words, the sort of old Anglo-Saxon words, one or two syllables, clearly weren't good enough for him. He had to use these long, long polysyllabic words. And at the end of the inaugural lecture, I don't think that anybody in the audience, and most of them were you know, pretty academic, professors and so on, researchers, I don't think anybody had actually understood a word that he had said. They kind of recognised the words, but what the meaning was when put together like that, who knows? So we have to be thinking about easy communication. And one of the things we need to be thinking about if we're looking at this sort of presentational side there are three things you need to be thinking about. What's your story? Why is it interesting? What is its impact? You'll notice I'm using various questions that start with who, why, what, where, when, how. The six W's, as they call it. Use those. Plan what you're doing. And often I find it's really helpful to actually use that approach to just work out what I'm going to do. Using the slides just as a sort of little aid memoir. Not that I'm gonna read it all, and sometimes lots of pictures instead. But you to be really fluent. You need to have enough knowledge in here that you don't need to read it. That just tells you where you've got to in the presentation. And particularly when you're face to face, it's a little bit more difficult when we're online like this. But the thing is, you need to be talking to your audience. You want to maintain eye contact. You need to animate your voice. You do not want to talk in a little mon a low monotone that goes on and on like this and sends us to sleep so quickly. You've got to provide animation. You've got to use your body. You've got to talk with your hands. It's so important. Just a very, very quick example. This was actually part of that story I introduced earlier on. How you can actually get away from bullet points and lots and lots and lots of text. It does mean you need to use, have much more knowledge in your head of what you want to say, but that's that five words at the top that tells you. We've been looking, I've been looking at this as one of the many areas about 
uh, information governments for six, eight years, maybe a bit longer, maybe 10 years now, nearly. All of our sensors tend to be kind of a little bit inaccurate in one way or another. And back in 2012, John Easton pointed out that uh, we have a problem with all of our data or most of our data is that you know, we don't know which data are or are not accurate. And for that which is not accurate, uh, we don't know how much inaccurate it is. And this kind of gives us a real problem with all of our data analytics. So I tripped over back in about 2012 um, that my phone was location tagging my photos rather badly, like 22 kilometers error. There's an explanation for that. I found when I got home in a local shopping center, I was standing there and over a period of about 10 minutes, I went for a very long walk, or at least the GPS went for a very long walk and various other things. Lots of problems. It has a consequence though. Think Near did a, a huge amount of analysis of you know, billions of location tagged communications sent out to American customers on to their phones and discovered that 15% roughly, or well, 10 to 15% of all of the location tagged messages were 100 kilometers in error, 60 miles error. That has another consequence. It means that you have a reputational risk, potentially, if you are sending out um, adverts to locations which are wrong. So, and then the fourth slide gives you, this is where I was going to go afterwards. Now, the point about what that little example was to really emphasize that you can provide a complete analysis or, or summary of your research with four or five slides with pictures. You don't need all of the other stuff. And you can do a lot of work with your research colleagues in the same sort of way, maybe by that, maybe by choosing simpler English, sim or whatever language you're using. You don't need the long words. You need to find words which everybody understands. So to the final slide, the takeaways. Think about who is your audience, who is in there. What do they think about? What are they interested in? Think even a little bit about why are they interested in your, your potential story? But then what is your story? And I mean a story both with logic and facts, but with emotion, the consequences, the human consequences, not necessarily the technology consequences, connect to us. If you do that, you are much more likely to capture your audience, your readers, and your collaborators. I think that's the last slide. Well, there's a, a few useful links. I'll send um, the presentation to Najib so he can post it up there so that you can have a copy of it as well, uh, if you like. Thank you very much indeed. Just going to stop the um, recording.